Hello. Hey. We are very happy to have you here. Introduce oh, yourself. Here. I'm Darren Brown, a filmmaker, father, and friend. I like that. The three yeah. Fs. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cinematography. Yes. What is a cinematographer's job? Uh, a cinematographer's job is to capture the visual of the project. Mm. Yeah, with a camera, of course. How would you suggest one get started as a cinematographer? Uh, just pick up a camera and start shooting. I mean, shoot any and everything. Keep a camera next to you and uh, record with intent. Mm -hmm. What are the three basics of cinematography? Um, framing, uh, I want to say rules 180, um, which is pretty much kind of like the, you know, can go hand in hand with framing. Um, and, uh, you know, for, for me, uh, keep a camera moving is always a good thing, you know, depending on, like I said, and that goes to just like shooting with intent, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? The psychological, uh, the psychology of, uh, the camera mm -hmm. is important. Who is the most important person to a cinematographer? Um, I would say I would say the most important person to a cinematographer would have to be uh, Gaffer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, you can't make pictures without light, right? Yeah, so Gaffer. Speaking of lighting, how do you begin to learn lighting? I would say, uh, how do you begin to learn lighting? Mm -hmm. um, uh, take a flashlight in a dark room. <laughs> and uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, light things, light, you know, small things first and see how that light plays. And I mean, you know, like all things, go on YouTube, mm -hmm. figure it out, you know. That's always a good place to kind of start to learn the rules of lighting or, you know, lighting is, lighting is a story within itself, so. What is contrast in a film? Uh, the way the light falls off things. Um, if we were speaking, if we're speaking contrast as far as lighting, and if we're speaking contrast as far as everything else, then everything has a, a story. Contrast of story, mm -hmm. contrast of uh, 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 cinematography. I mean, it's, contrast can be lent to a lot of different things in film. But as far as lighting goes, it's just kind of the way that uh, you know the dark and the the dark and the light kind of hit each other. The light and no light marries each other. How do you choose a camera? Hmm, that's good. That's good. That's a damn good question. Um, depending on the project, mm -hmm. sometimes smaller cameras uh, works. Um, depending on the look that you have, sometimes uh, expensive cameras is just not the way to go all the time. You know, depending on what you want to do, how you want to shoot it, and with action films. I mean, sometimes. With projects that I do, I use more than one type of camera to get certain things. Like, you know, sometimes I'm not rigging a, a Aerie to a, a you know, a $100,000 Aerie to a, a, a car. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm using, you know, a, a $33,000 Black Magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to shoot certain things because I'd rather that flip on the ground than an Aerie, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it, dep it depends on the projects, the look that you're looking for. I would say always do the research and just learn about each camera and just the way that... Uh, it produces a picture. How do you make locations work? Mm, how do I make them work? Well, I think the first rule of thumb is uh, yeah, trying not to make them work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, acquiring them uh, first thing going to a location, just make sure what what do you hear beside what what is what is the noise in the location? I mean, you know what I'm saying. Some locations got planes flying over them every five minutes. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Some locations have traffic right in front of it. Uh, you know, I think going in there and making sure that a location is soundproof, making sure people don't live upstairs, making sure ain't no crying babies around, mm -hmm. making sure that it's in a friendly neighborhood. You know what I mean? So, but sometimes that works for, for a scene too, all the noise around works for a scene. So depending on what you're doing and how you're doing it, uh, that'll dictate whether it's a good location or not. For someone who's like limited on locations, is there a way to be creative with what Defin you got? Definitely, a lot of projects uh, uh, lessen their company moves, and when I say company moves, meaning moving the production to another location, uh, and can shoot within a one block radius and get the whole movie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it, 
you know, that, that lends to the, the cinematographer, lends to the director. Um, you can shoot literally four corners of the neighborhood and look like a different neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, what's that? How do you work with the director on set? How do I work with the director? Um, well, for me, a lot of my experience is first-time directors. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes I get hired to kind of like walk them through. Um, just letting them know that patience is a virtue. I mean, you know, if you crack, then the whole production is going to crack. So uh, being patient, knowing what you want, uh, knowing how you want it, uh, communication is key. Um, but also uh, um, uh, time management is the most important thing. You know what I'm saying? Making mm-hmm. sure you're not wearing out your crew, your actors and actresses. But, you know, sometimes when first-time directors, they just got to – keep on doing it in order to manage all that at one time. What do cinematographers need to know about shooting a film? Um, listen, uh, depending on, create a relationship with the director, both of you going to it, understanding what you both need to get out of it. Um, you know, sometimes cinematographers may come into it, and if a director allows the cinematographer to just do his thing, then that's good. But some directors don't want cinematographers to come on board and just do what they want to do. Sometimes they want them to come on board and assist them. Or sometimes they just may want them to come on board and just shoot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So creating that understanding before you go into the project of what's my job as a cinematographer. We understand what the, uh, what the meaning and the definition of a cinematographer is. But sometimes that doesn't dictate what the relationship of a cinematographer and director has. Mm-hmm. So cinematographers, when you're going into something understanding and being that that uh support to your director is key and sometimes you know uh creating that that trust with the director is imperative for a cinematographer to go in and have or create you know cool directing yeah who is the most important person to the director the most important to the person to the director is i, I would say is the ad mm. <laughs> It's important that AD keeps you together, keeps schedule going, uh, make sure that you have a clear head. Um, well, I would go as far as to say, sometime in directing, the co-director is probably like the most important, but sometime when you're just directing, you have a director, I mean, a, a AD. Mm-hmm. Um, communicating, that, that's your first line defense, your AD. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of people um, kind of get that, that screwed up a lot of time, time in the meeting because some people think AD is the person that's going to, always be next to the director they're usually ones kind of putting together uh uh, the whole um schedule of the film so you know um in that respect and um yeah i think the ad is the most important because it's going to keep the director on his toes so you would say that's very important to have an independent film at ad yeah yeah Yeah. i think it's 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 imperative to have an Mm -hmm. independent film at ad Uh, ad is is very important they're going to keep everything together for you so if you, if you go into it and you don't have an assistant director, and I'm not talking about a director in the sense of coming on set and helping you tell the actors and actresses what to do. I'm talking about somebody who's going to manage the production itself along with the unit production manager or whoever you have in that place. Mm. How important is it for the director to know their vision? Oh, that's... that's um, let, me not, let me not go. Uh, <laughs> It's, a, it's very important for a director to know its vision. And I'm only speaking more so about uh, right now what's going on. Um, a lot of people kind of just want to make a movie and not understanding the communication and how important it is when you do hire people that knows exactly what they want for you. So um, going into it, knowing what you want for yourself is important because sometimes you just lose control if you don't know what your vision is and you lose trust when you don't know what the vision is because as a dp as a gaffer as everything if you're going into it and you're telling them to do one thing and then you're like oh no don't do that do this it's unnecessary overworking you people feel like you don't know what you're doing so um we had you got to know if not anything just know what you want as far as time management again Mm -hmm. what you want out of the scene how many shots you want uh what you want to convey and even if you can't tell them the shots 
convey it to your DP. This is the feel that I want. Mm -hmm. And then allow them to create that for you. Okay. Yeah. What do you think are the biggest mistakes new directors make? The biggest mistakes that a director make? Well, um, number one is not telling the story um, or lazy filmmaking. Mm -hmm. um, not getting the coverage, not getting the shots that needs to be got for us to understand the feeling and the character. I mean, sometimes a push in can convey so much in a character. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Certain shots, uh, uh, Dutch angles can convey so much uh, when we're looking at something uh, psychologically going on with a character. So um, don't be the director that just wants to rush and get through it. Like, take your time because sometimes five shots can be conveyed in one shot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, don't rush. What makes a great director? R relationships. Mm -hmm. I think having a relationship to pull people through and helping, and a director, helping people get out of the way of themselves is important. You know what I mean? Sometimes actors, sometimes crew can kind of get in the way of themselves on doing the job that they want to do but they don't know how to do it because they may be a little timid and, or whatever the case may be. But a director building that comfort and that confidence in the crew and in the actors and actresses uh, is what uh, a director should have, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, he's a confidence builder, so when his confidence uh, sways, then the whole production confidence sways, so you gotta be a strong leader. Do you consider yourself a great director? Um. I do consider myself a, I consider myself a, a great director, but I mean, with the greatness comes just a lot more than just that. Like, I guess my question would be, you know, do they consider me a great director? <laughs> <laughs> what is Darren Brown's directing style? Man, my directing style is, um, wow, my directing style. I'm, so I'm a technical director, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I hire actors and actresses that I'm confident that they'll bring the performance. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm definitely a camera director. I know a lot of people are actor director. I'm a camera director. Um, I like the way that it looks because I feel like the way that it looks make you feel a certain way. Um, but I do feel like in certain situations I have to be an actor's director in order to bring out more emotion or the emotion, or the, the comedic timing, and things like that, so, but for the most part, I'm a camera, I'm a technical camera director. Okay. Yeah. So what is it like for you when you're in your directing element? Like, what's that experience? Um, uh, my, 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 the wheels in my head is turning, like, all the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the, the directives is some type of person I wanna say things one time, um, but I don't mind. I don't mind explaining myself. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I just don't want to explain myself two or three times. Um, so for me, I'm I'm definitely in a in a bubble, and and I invite people in my bubble one at a time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. When you're going and you're talking to people, and you're trying to get things across, like I take conversations one at a time mm -hmm. um, because it helps me focus, and none of the thoughts that I have fly out my head. So, and plus, you know, like. Uh, um, I would say a lot of the films that I do, I already kind of have cut in my head. It's already mm -hmm. edited, so I know exactly what I want. You know what I mean? But uh, working with DPs and everything, I always allow them to do the things that adds to that exact thing that I want because I'm always about uh, collaboration and creativity with, with others. So uh, I allow DPs to kind of do their thing in some, some instances, but it's some things that I just must have. How do you get better at directing? I would say keep doing it. Learn from your mistakes. Get out the way of yourself. Um, it's, people, it's people that have different area expertise because, I mean, you can be directing for five years off and on. It can be somebody that's continuously directing for two years, constantly, and been in more situations than you and everything and can teach you something. So I always say keep an open mind without, um, without you know having 
your thoughts clouded or influenced by others, but always keep an open mind. I mean, that's the, that's the creative process. Allow creators to create. Mm-hmm. Is it important to know the language of a director? Oh, yeah. I think it's definitely important. Um, and the best way to do that is just, is just everybody use the professional terms. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's not, let's not go on set and make shit up. You know what I mean? Because when you get to a certain level, you can't go there and make shit up. And that's what we all want to do. We want to get to a certain level. Um, so you can't go in there with your own vernacular because people just want to understand. So I think it's very important to learn uh, not only how you communicate with your peers here, but how you communicate with everybody else everywhere else. So for me, I mean, I work, I'm independent, so sometimes I have to explain things, and I'm not there to run school, but, you know, sometimes if things is easier said this way, I don't mind doing it, but when I'm out there working with other professionals that's been doing it a long time, I dare not speak like I do maybe on a set here, you know, and I try, and I try my best to just, make sure everybody understands and everything. And the more that I do it, the more that I see people are using the terminology that's needed to to communicate, you know? Mm-hmm. Should a director be a problem solver? Yeah. That's all you're doing on set is problem solving. Shit. Mm-hmm. It's, not, <laughs> it's not one. You should solve. You should be a part. I mean, I, I ain't going to say that. You should have a team that solves most problems. But you got to understand that um, people want to see you and come to you to solve certain issues that only you can solve, that only you can manage, that only you can make people comfortable. So sometimes, you know, when you work with actors, you can't ask a PA to go and solve an actor's problem because that's your relationship that you're asking mm-hmm. to intervene in. You have to go and talk to them and ask them what's going on. How can I help? The best thing that you can do with working with someone is what can I do to make you more comfortable? And it's simple things, you know what I'm saying? You're asking people to work, you know, uh, for additional hours in some cases. If they don't, if they want a fucking salad, get them salad. Mm-hmm. Go across town and get somebody to get you a salad. You know what I'm saying? Just something yeah. that's just going to push them along, you know what I'm saying? And I think sometimes we do take their acting for granted because sometimes we write emotional scripts. And that emotion is not fake. That's real yeah. emotion for them. And for you to just keep pushing Later on in the day, sometimes you wear them out. And you're not getting the best out of them. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think you should be a part of the a part of the problem solving, or at least be aware that it's a problem being solved. So, kind of like a split, like you have to focus on the actors as well as yeah managing yeah 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 yeah, yeah managing the whole thing. But I mean, mm-hmm. you know, with a good team, I think from the very beginning, just having somebody else build that 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 great relationship with the actors mm-hmm. uh, is key too. You know what I'm saying? Don't be the end all be all to an actor but definitely have some say so mm-hmm. because sometimes you do got to use that buffer. You know what I mean? If somebody is like, no, oh, well, now I got to go and talk to Darren. And mm-hmm. sometimes you do got to have that little leeway to say, hey, yeah, I said it was okay or I didn't say it was okay and, you know, respectfully. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. How do you get started in directing? Mm. Telling everybody in your life what to do. No, just like <laughs> 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 um, how do you get started in directing? Mm-hmm. Man, um, I think first of all, you got to get rid of a lot of shit within yourself. Um, the the shyness, the insecurities, uh, the being comfortable with telling the person what to do unapologetically. Um, you know what I mean? Like you want something from them and you, you're, you're asking them to give that to you. And you can't compromise. I mean, sometimes you can't compromise. You can't throw your hand and be like, oh, that was cool. If it wasn't cool, mm-hmm. be truthful with yourself. If, if you need something from them, you ask them exactly how you want it done. And if you're a director that says, hey, the compromise is I want you to do it this way because I enjoy your performance and I like the way you do it, then that's really not the compromise. That's just what I want. But never be afraid to tell a person, this is what I want. I need you to do it like this. And this is what I want to see. Because if you go into a film and you compromise so much that you're not even making a film you want to make. You know what I mean? So... Just get the just get the timid that timid stuff out of yourself and uh and and uh be confident in uh, asking people what you want from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What would you say are three words, like three vital words for a director to have in their head? Uh, three words. Um, what I go into a film 
hoping and thinking. Number one, trust. Uh, you got you got to trust. You got to trust shit is not gonna go right, and you got to trust shit is gonna go amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, um, trust is one of them. Another word is uh, man. Another word that I would say is when you go on these sets, like be healthy. Mm-hmm. You you got You got to go on sets knowing that you're going to be able to do the 12 hours or the 14 hours like eat right man take vitamins do all that shit like this is it's like you don't go into war ill prepared you don't go into war without a gun you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying go in there and make sure that your health is good you're not getting sick in the middle of the production i mean on my production it's always some emergency available or something you know what i mean um that's important and uh communication is key like talk things out. I mean, everything. Some things don't need to be hashed out right then and there, but make sure that it is addressed because, you know, as we all know, shit. Day one, two, and three is just amazing. It's mm-hmm. kumbaya. After you get to like four, five, six, seven, seven day, we fighting. Chaotic. If there's some shit going on, we mm-hmm. <laughs> it needs to be addressed. It needs to be. <laughs> so make sure you got your schedule and make sure you have those morning meetings with them and let them know that they're appreciated they are needed let's get through this Mm -hmm. rah 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 because if you go let something fester for two or three days you liable to lose somebody (laughs) (laughs) what are the best tips for working with actors um i think at that at that particular point in time when you're working with the actor like in a movie you're like in a relationship with them Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying or there's a friendship or whatever type of relationship you want to put into it and you care for them in that way you know what i'm saying what is it what is it that you need uh, what is it that i can do for you because you're expecting a lot out of them so you want to make them as comfortable as possible you know mm-hmm. um but again i mean you shouldn't it's reciprocity throughout the whole thing you know what i'm saying i'm giving you good shit you give me good shit mm-hmm. So let's not take advantage of each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's not do that. So, uh, uh, yeah, creating that understanding of reciprocity is important. As a director, do you need to know the basics of acting? We've talked about this once before. Do, do I need to know? I think it, I mean, everything helps. Education helps in every way. Mm-hmm. So um, do I need to know the basics? I think you should know at least the basics, at the very least. Um, but the most part is trying to pull the performance out of them. Now, how you go about doing that and communicating, because everybody needs to be communicated with, from the gaffer to, to the PA to everything. So learning how to communicate with the actor is key. And every actor needs to be communicated to differently. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I'm not there to teach an actor how to act. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's always been me. Like, I don't want to teach an actor how to act. But um, uh, at, me, at least me knowing the basics of, you know, blocking, uh, saying the words properly, uh, you know, th- emoting feelings and things like that. Yeah, you should you should know how to kind of explain that better to an actor. Mm-hmm. But again, if you're doing a lot of that, then did you really hire an actor? True. Yeah. <laughs> What's your take on dealing with the difficult actors? Mm-hmm. How do you deal with them? I don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, but it's, it's caveats to that. Uh, when does an actor, at what particular point in time in the production, does an actor become difficult? Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, they can start showing their ass and they still got three days of shooting important scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends. I've never really dealt with an actor that's completely, you know, off, off, off the shit. But um, for me, I just try to have some type of conversation with them and say, hey, you know, we're going to get through this. I'm a friend. I've dealt, I've dealt more so with difficult crew than I have with difficult actors, to be honest. And so, you know what I'm saying? But again, making sure you create that safe space ongoing from day one. You feeling all right? What do you need? What can we get you? That keeps them comfortable. You know what I mean? Um, making sure that you're protecting them from, because sometimes we have known faces on sets and people want to talk to them and sometimes actors don't want to be talked to because they're working like everybody else you know mm-hmm. what I mean so just creating those spaces from them and I think you get through the production you know fairly easy as a director what movie changed your life um that I made or seen both oh uh that I seen damn 
it ain't been many that's changed my life as I've seen it. It's a lot of them that I enjoy. I don't, I don't, I don't watch movies with a with a director's eye. I always watch it as for entertainment. You know what I mean? It's been a cr- ton of great movies. Um, one that has changed my life is probably Melanin. It was difficult to get white people for that movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just made me realize, like, yo, when you're doing a different kind of movie. It's hard to get people to be on it. Like, you know, when you when you're doing a lot of you know, everybody wanna be a gangster and shit. You know, you can get a you can get a motherfucker to come and shoot somebody up and oh, uh, that's it? An hour? Okay, cool. I already talk to y'all later. But when you ask the people to really come on set, act, do stuff, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they are not an actor and they just like, yo, oh, you know how they, oh man, put me, I wanna be the guy walking by. And it's like you can be the guy walking by, but you're gonna have to be here for three hours. Ah, oh, you know what I mean? So that movie changed. That movie changed my perspective on, kind of, to be honest, like how I write when I know I'm shooting it here in Detroit. To be honest, um, so that that did that that movie did change my life. Who is your favorite director? Um, Spike Lee. Spike Lee, man, uh, he created a whole black culture for film. So uh, with all the films that he did, so that's my favorite. Um, made the. He made my favorite movie, and he made my least favorite movie. That's crazy. And uh, I actually, you know, I actually got to sit down. So um, me and part of Martha's Vineyard Film Festival, I actually got to sit down with him, screen his movie, sit down with him one-on-one next to him, watch his movie. Uh, We chatted and did a lot, and it was like, yo, my whole career, I just wanted to meet this guy and for me to be in such a – an intimate situation with him where I'm watching his film and it's just me and him in this big ass theater and he's like oh man how you what you feel about it day to and you know what I said it was just like an awesome experience for me because I've seen him in passing but never to the point where he was actually like yo I'm talking to you what you feel how you you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so it was it was a crazy moment uh for me you know what I mean but um and I get to meet him again because I'm doing the film festival again. so it's great man and um yeah that's amazing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I love it. Cool. Producing. Oh, okay. How do you produce an independent film? Uh, how do you produce one? Man, first of all, uh, just getting a lot of just getting people that's that's competent in their positions. And I know we all people always say, give people a chance, give people a chance. But people who always are like, give me a chance, don't even know if they really want that chance once they realize how much the work goes into that chance. You know what I mean? So um, producing a movie, I say, if you if you don't want to lose your ass, get competent people and pay them. Mm-hmm. So you can at least learn without too many hiccups. You know? Um, how do you learn how to produce a film? How do you learn how to produce? I, w- I would say first, I would say first, get on get on somebody else's mm-hmm. and learn and, and watch. And, you know, everybody want to, I mean, I think we're in an era in the film industry in Detroit where everybody just want to jump out and just do something. So they don't give a damn what hat they wearing. They just want to wear one. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which makes it difficult for all the people who really do it and you know what I'm saying? And we got to report to somebody who may not know everything about what's going on. So um, and then being humble and then at least be humble enough to say I don't know. A lot of people not doing that either. So um, I would say definitely go and work up under somebody and learn. I mean, everybody here, the thing about Detroit is the whole city is so damn accessible when it comes to movies. We got people waking up saying, I'm about to make me a movie. That shit is unprecedented. Like, like you can't go out to Hollywood and be like, man, I'm just making me a movie. They're going to be like, man, get out of here. <laughs> so here, everybody is blessed with the opportunity to inbox somebody in a movie, get a response and say, hey, if you're interested, you can come to set. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's no excuse why we are not making good movies or we're just fumbling movies left and right or just not listening, you know what I mean? So making movies as easy as some of the production companies here make it seem. Making movies, it's no small, it's no small feat. It's, it's, it's a very heavy lift. You know, so. How do you pick a script to produce? I usually write my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't, um, really produced a lot of others um more so direct people people don't call me to produce they more so call me to direct i don't know why they don't call me to produce 
but <laughs> um, because I'm a, I'm a damn good producer. But um, yeah, I usually produce my own stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what is the hardest part of producing your films? Um, getting commitments, I guess, for the most part. You know what I'm saying? You always have in mind who you want to work on it. And the commitment, and you know, sometimes we get to a point in our industry where money is not going to even be the thing anymore. It's going to be like whether I want to work with you, whether I see where your projects are going. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's going to dictate who you have. Right now, you know, it's you know, getting paid is good. Everybody, everybody wants that, but it's to a point where money is not going to be the deciding factor on whether you work with somebody or not. So the commitment, I believe that somebody can come and do it. And everybody's just, there's so many movies going on. It's hard to just catch people to do your movie unless you're just one of those people that they're like, no, I want to work with you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I commit to your project as opposed to their project. So the commitment is the hardest thing Mm -hmm. when producing. What is your hardest lesson that you learned? That I learned uh, doing film? The hardest lesson that I learned. Um, Man. What is the hardest lesson that I learned? That, uh, oh, 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 loyalty. Shit, everybody, everybody ain't loyal to, to you or your film. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, and, and not that I've ran into this issue a lot because, I, you know, people always say, oh, why y'all work with the same people? And it's like, we work with the same people because they're dependable, because we know them. We know what to expect from them. And uh, we can place them where we want to, where they'll be different, or they'll, you know, they'll be the same in some cases. But um, yeah, loyalty, loyalty is a big thing um, that I've learned to either deal with or not deal with when it comes to other people and Darren Brown films. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you come up with a budget? Man, you got to know what people are asking for, <laughs> like how much they're asking for, and. Um, and times that, twenty-five uh, percent up mark, and then put ten percent contingency, and because the budget is never the budget. It's not many times where you come out of film and you're like, "Oh yeah, I ain't spent as much as I thought." No, you always spend as much as you thought plus more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, I would say, I would say definitely do your research. You can't just pull the budget out your ass and think that it's gonna cover what you want. Do your research. Uh, um, and that's what line producing is for. You know what I'm saying? So me coming up with a budget is not necessarily what I do. You know, I know how much it costs to kind of make the type of movie that I want, but in order to get the exact amount of what I'm going to need in order to produce it, then I hire a line producer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you make a good quality film with $20,000? Uh, sure. I mean, you can make any kind of film you want to with $20,000. Good quality, yeah. The vision, um, money is not money is not the deciding factor on whether something is good or bad. It's the vision, you know what I mean. Um, it's how it's the execution, um, and and the story. So I don't think twenty thousand dollars can most certainly uh, be what you need it to be. But at the end of the day. Um, what you gonna what you gonna give up when you're working with professionals? You know what I'm saying? What are you, what are you going what are you willing to give? Are you willing to give points? Are you willing to do back end? Like what are you wanting to give if your film does not cost twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars? And you can't expect people to work for nothing and you get everything. That's just not a thing. So yeah. So what should a producer spend the most money on actors or crew? Man, a producer should spend as much money as the project asks for. You know what I mean? So if you're like, hey, I want I want this to look amazing, then you're going to have to hire amazing people. And you know what I'm saying? And your actors, you, and like I said, it depends. Say, so say if you have a budget and you want to pay an actor to come in and you say, hey, I want this actor and the actor eats a lot of the budget. Then at some particular point in time, you're going to have to go to somebody in the, on the movie set or the crew or whatever and say, hey, I can't pay you this, but this is what I can do. Budgeting is about compromising 
And in some cases, it's not about compromising because people put up money and they have the money to put up. Me personally, I ain't a fan of spending my own money. So <laughs> with that being said, <laughs> I don't care how much money I got. I'm just not a fan of spending my own shit. So with that being said, um, yeah, I, I do I do uh I do grease the wheel sometime when it comes to other people. And I I've had a tenant I've been working with for so long. It's just it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, man, we here, this is what you're getting, this is what you're getting, this is what you're getting, let's work. You know, so do big names guarantee the money back? It doesn't guarantee. Big names don't guarantee anything. Mm-hmm. Um, does it make it more profitable? I mean, uh, or brings in more money? I'm, I'm sure because they're names. You know what I mean? But uh, does doesn't guarantee. It doesn't care. Guarantee anything. That celebrity can do something tomorrow and fuck the whole movie up, mm-hmm. as we've seen before. You know what I mean? So, no. I think I think what brings in what brings in the most money is good talent and good storytelling. You can't beat that. So, do you give percentages or cash out everyone? Mm, no, I get percentages. Mm. Yeah, I think um, percentages percentages uh, gets people invested in more than just more than just physically. You know what I'm saying? They want to see you win. I mean, they want to see you win because they win. So for me, I do. I mean, shit, I'm giving percentages to investors. You know what I mean? Um, so. Uh, why not give percentages to people that's going to work for me? Because this has always been my thing. I need to give the people that I constantly work with percentages because I can't have y'all going to get a regular job. I need y'all here doing this all the time. And without me giving you money to do that, then you're going to go and work for somebody else, and then I'm not going to have you anymore. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we have to make sure that we're making enough money over here and doing enough business over here that we are all here all the time, every day, working and building legacy and wealth for ourselves. So for the most part, the people that I work with, they are invested in it as far as percentages goes. Um, And you know, that's just kind of what it is. What films make the least money and what films make the most money? Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) If I do that shit. I have no idea. Uh, I would assume Marvel and uh, James Cameron movies make the most money. Uh, or I that... guess in better terms, what genre of films? Okay, independent so a, market. Being, being real, being real about it, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what this is. Um, the films that make the most money are big budget Hollywood superhero films, no doubt. Mm-hmm. The films that make the least money are black films. Period. Black films are the films that is at the bottom of top grossing films. If 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 a Marvel movie made seventy million dollars, everybody at Marvel killed themselves. If a black film made seventy million dollars, we'd be producing more lives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's just the way it is. So um, the films that make the less money are are black narratives. Mm-hmm. In today's market, should you produce any and everything that comes to you? Yeah, Are you, fine? you have, if you have the budget and the team, shit, that's what I do. I mean, you know, um, I love I love writing against different genres, and I don't do it because I'm thinking I never go into it writing something like, oh, I think this is gonna make money, or I think I just write it thinking people are gonna enjoy this and I want to write it. I think it's a fun thing. So I ne- my my thing is not to ever go out and try to be different. That's not what I do. I write things that's different just because I don't know how to write other things. I know how to write different things. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like my mind my mind goes to a certain place and I create a story out of what ifs. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I write more I write about I write about more what if stories than I do familiarity or narratives. You know what I'm saying? That's why I got things like a zombie comedy, uh, melanin, uh, uh, a psychological horror film. You know what I'm saying? Because those are all based on what ifs. Um, so you know, I leave all the the familiar narratives. You know what I'm saying? Um, whatever the cinema to the people that knows how to write, that's lived that experience. You know, I grew up on Seven Mile, but I was never. You know what I'm saying? Like growing up there, I've seen everything. 
So for me, it's just my personal stories. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if me writing my personal stories is going to be entertaining. So therefore, I write what if stories that I know people would be like, oh, yeah, what if that did happen, man? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's where everything comes from.